Welcome to Boone Community Theatre's production of Robin Hood and Maid Marian, and thank you for coming to see my original script. This show was written for this space and this community. I hope you enjoy. The part of the Sheriff of Nottingham will be played by John Hoffman for tonight's performance. For the sake of your fellow audience members, please silence your cell phones and refrain from flash photography during the show. The restrooms are located at the back of the house and in the back room. If you need to step outside during the show, feel free to use the exit door in the back room. There will be a 15 minute intermission with refreshments in the back. And now, without further ado, on behalf of all the actors and crew who spent many hours preparing, sit back, relax, and enjoy Robin Hood and Maid Marian. To the Earl of Nottinghamshire, Lord Robin of Loxley, Sir Robert Fitzwalter, I have received your letter requesting the hand of my beloved daughter Marian. Your request has pleased me greatly. I certainly rejoice that one of your nobility would put interest in a common knight and his daughter. I have known you since your youth, and I knew your father before you. You are a great man, worthy of your honor and prosperity. With great joy, I accept your request and grant you the hand of my daughter. And it pleases me, knowing that she will have happiness with you in your life. I wish you both a long life in your happiness. As you have requested, we both will come join you at the archery tournament of the Sheriff of Nottingham. After the tournament, if it be to your liking, we will come to stay with you at Loxley Hall for a time. And I pray it be not long after when you two shall be wed. Until that time, I wish you share in the happiness which is mine. Sir Robert Fitzwalter. Mary, your beauty this day is more than even memories. Your graceful presence brightens even this noonday sun. I'm delighted to see you. I trust your travel to Nottingham was easy. It pleases me greatly that your father granted my request for marriage. I trust you are likewise pleased, and may my happiness be also yours. This day is a joyous day. From that day last summer when I went to visit your father, you have enchanted my thoughts. And, on a day not far hence, you should be what? If it pleases my father, it pleases me. Truly. Uh, where is your father? Has he not come? I wish to greet him heartily and share my gratitude. Father had urgent business in London. Oh, alas. Today, at the Sheriff's Tournament, I shoot for you. Here, here! Here, here! Attention and welcome to the great tournament of the Golden Arrow. Archers, take your place. Let the shooting begin. I'll take the first shot. Shot Give me now the chance to best it. Uh, shot not to be ashamed of, but you're shooting with the finer. Take yours now, Lord Robin. Right, Senator, your aim never fails, good Robin of Loxley. You're too kind, your shafts also flew up. Take a shot now at the further distance. <laughs> hey, a shot to be proud of that. Better even than your first. You speak kindly. Strike. I didn't miss the target altogether. <sighs> that fool 
Rich Robin. His aim is too true. I have not more, more skillful archers come to, come to test their bows. Is it foolish to shoot well? That Robin thinks too much of himself. Don't get too comfortable, Marion Fitzwalter. Here it goes. Final shot. It was a good game, my fellows. your own shafts, you also shot well. Stick with sport and someday you'll be better than myself. You're too modest. Your aim is always the better. As you have proven yourself the best shot this day, the award given this fine gold arrow. Thank you for your generosity. <clears throat> and the fun game today? <laughs> Mary, you. Use it to pin your hair and bear my honor. Thank you, Robin. Did you enjoy the sport? It was quite the thrill. Where did you learn to shoot? Well, I've handled the bow since the boy. I spent many hours in my youth shooting. At times out in the woods when I had other matters I should have attended. You are a great shot. Finest in all England. Nay, nay. There are others in the King's Knights far better. This is but a small tournament with a small reward. It's a game of the sheriff to try and win the favor of the people. Still, a pretty token, is it not? It is. Um, what business has your father away in London? It is in regards to his and my lord, the Earl of Lincoln. He has not said more of it. I fear it is grave business. But he hopes to return soon and plan for the wedding shortly after. I'm delighted. This is me greatly, for your presence gives me constant happiness. Maid Marian, are you happy? Surely, why would I not be? Father's been quite fond of you ever since you were a boy. He rejoices that you would seek me in marriage. Do not doubt my words, Robin. You are a good man, and it's time for me to seek a new life. We are not either of us children. <laughs> I am no longer a boy who can run away to the woods play bow and only a flat can spare when I return. <laughs> Robin, I must speak with you. Oh, how are you? Lady Marion. I am well. Uh, this is my cousin, Lady Win Scarlet. How are you, my lady? Charmed and delighted to make your acquaintance. His urgent, Robin. Go on, Marion. I shall follow in a moment. What is it, Wynne? Lord Simon has just returned from London. I overheard him talking with the sheriff. Apparently he came here straight away bearing news. Robin, he bears a boy from the king for your arrest. What? How so? I don't know the whole story. They uh, left parts out. They've obviously talked to this before. They said something like they're done with you. You were to be arrested for treason against his majesty, King Henry. Treason? This is not so. Of course I know that, but... What do we do? Do you know what they plan to do? They intend on arresting you. This night, they spoke of a hanging. No trial. I fear not. Lord Simon spoke of the rage his majesty had. I believe King Henry awarded the problem be eliminated simply and without hindrance. Locking me in a dungeon is not good enough for them. They express eagerness to conclude the business before the judgment may be amended. Contrive fault in which to ask before the erroneousness can be uncovered. I fear that is so. I must leave. Where to? I must hide. I see no point in going to the king for better judgment. 
and catch me ere I would get there, and it could be a futile attempt to appear in such a way. Nay, I shall go to Sherwood, and there to stay until fate may turn or fortune open an opportunity. I will follow after you, Robin. But I will stay here a while first, and see what I might learn. Careful, Lynn. They will not give you freedom if you're caught. I will stay out of the way. You are their target. You will forget about me if I do not show my face. Very well, sir. I shall leave before I look in with my delight. Um, see to it that Marion is safe and able to return to her father? Certainly. Very well, sir. Make way good, sir. Allow me to pass. Greetings, my fellow. I'm in rather a rush and would much rather not get my feet wet. Lord Robin? Uh, it's no matter. It is Lord Robin of Loxley. Why are you in such a way back place as this, and in such a hurry? Yeah. I would not bother you. Nay, you have done good to me. I would return the favor. I stand accused of treason and will have pursuers. Please, allow me to pass. Accused? I don't believe it. Allow your lord to pass, then. If you are hunted, then perhaps I should not. Let me pass. A traitor is no lord. You cannot command me. Must I go around? Tell me your tale, and I will let you pass. Otherwise, I will follow you. The tale is my own. Fight me, then. I will not fight a good man. In good, in good sport. If you knock me off this log and into the water, I will not hinder you any more. Fine. You be so stubborn, I shall play your hand. Get yourself a quarter staff. I am ready. Give me a bath. commanded by King Henry himself. Come, this is not a request. Run! But we should not linger here. You go on. I will return and give word to my family. That may not be wise. I will remember your face. I, I, I wish only to speak with them. I will not stop you, but ignorance may be a protection to them. Give some time before you speak with them. 
You can return soon enough. Those who are after me will forget you. Do as you will, but I will appreciate the company and the help getting set up. It grieves me to leave them without a word, even for a few days. But you have spoken wise, good lord. Robin. Robin of the Wood, I shall be. Thus it was that Robin of Locksley, the Earl of Nottinghamshire, became an outlaw, and that for no other crime than his goodness and compassion. Robin expected to merely sustain himself in the woods, keeping alive and living life alone. But the good character of Robin of Locksley would not be cited, even in the world. Hello. Hey! What brings you to show? <laughs> hey, you come out of nowhere hiding like that. Did I? Uh, hiding? No, I wasn't hiding, just relaxing. It's a fine day. It must be this wood then, they say that it's haunted. <laughs> Only deep and dense, I'm afraid, and quite charming on a day like this one. I'm Robin, Robin of the Wood. How may I help you? Robin? Lord Robin of Loxley? I am no more of Loxley Hall, unless fate may turn. I am Robin in the shade of a wood made up of. Oh, Lord Robin, I seek your help. Uh, a misfortune has befallen me, and, and I have accused you that would give me no mercy. Say on, friend. Uh, last autumn, the stable burnt down, and in it much of our stores of food for the winter, uh, along with the horse and the plow. Oh, it were a long, rough winter. We had extra work of it come spring, a get in the fields of farm. And now the sheriff has come for the taxes and we've not to pay him with. He threatens to take off we have left for sustenance and we cannot give what he needs. What can I do when we shall starve? I sought you at Loxley Hall to plead their judgment, but but I was rejected and, and told that you're no more an earl, but an outlaw of treason. I, I was able to learn that you've headed the show, and, and so I've come uh, in desperation. The tale troubles me, friend. The sheriff is no more, no merciful fellow. I. Evil deed or misfortune, I am out of his way, and he is free to pass his judgments unhindered. Little I can do without my title. Tell me, how much is it that you owe? Ten shillings by a week from yesterday. They would sack you for so little. Aye. Here, take mine. It shall do you better good than I up here in the wood. Oh, God bless you, Lord. You're too kind. Robin. I'm Robin of the Wood. Indeed, Robin was out of the way of the sheriff and Lord Simon, the Earl of Yorkshire. A number of nobles of the area were hungry for power and wealth. Robin of Loxley, without himself realizing it, became a thorn in their flesh. He would give kind judgment to any of the people he had the power to do so for, enacting the king's will with grace. With Robin around, their reach of power was limited. If their reach grew too great and the king would hear, their titles and lands would be stripped. Robin was a clear opponent. He had to be removed. Of these nobles, the Earl of Lincoln, the Bishop of Hereford, as well as Simon II de Sanui, Earl of Yorkshire, had visited the king and gained his ear. They spoke ill of Lord Robin, convincing his majesty Henry II that Robin was plotting treason, when in fact, they were far closer to treason themselves than the big Robin of Loxley Hall. Simon returned on the day of the archery tournament and arranged with the sheriff of Nottingham for Robin's arrest, bearing warrant from the king. Marianne! Hello, mother. Why are you home so soon? Robin of Loxley is a traitor to King Henry. They are arresting him. Robin of Loxley? How so? I don't know. 
I'm glad that you're home. Safe. What a tragedy. Uh, he escaped in the Sherwood. Oh. Uh -huh. So I was told by a knight from Lincolnshire who had gone out with him. Sure. You should write a letter to Father. Have you heard from him? He should be getting home by now. Only that he arrived in London and his business would take longer than expected. Oh. What is that in your hair? Oh, Lord Robin. I forgot about it. It was the award for the archery tournament. He won it and gave it to me. That was before they came to arrest him. It is a pretty token. It is merely that. And the gift from an outlaw. Well, tuck it away somewhere. It's going inside. It's been a long day. Welcome to my wood. Robin! <laughs> it's good to see you well. Likewise. I feared you stayed in a more dangerous position than myself. Tell me, how have you fared since you parted in Nottingham some three weeks ago? I stayed in Nottingham, keeping out of the sheriff's sight, but I did manage to learn a little. <laughs> Gwyn Scarlet! Robin told me you would be coming. Put that knife away! You are on edge. I am not to fear. This is Little John. He helped me on my way to Sherwood and has stayed with me since until it's safe for him to return home. I pray you bring good news that I may know it wise to return home. Oh, yes, I did hear of your action. It angered the sheriff to be sure. I have no head that it's spoken of again. They are content to let Robin wander in the wood. You are not their present concern. With luck, they hope you will simply starve. Oh, far from it. I have plenty and am quite able to take care of myself. I'm not so inept as they may hope. Hmm. We should prepare a feast to celebrate our relative safety and your return. In the morn, we'll send little John back home to his family. Aye. Aye. They are ravenous titles. The sheriff has been busy on a collection of well overdue taxes. Taking and demanding without care or concern if it hurts the people. So far he hasn't burned any place down, but he has sacked and pillaged a few to collect the missing sum, and has threatened burning if they resist. And the Bishop of Hereford paid Nottingham a visit last week. He told the sheriff to have a collection be made for meat and grain for the church. The first of several wagons to be sent to the bishop is leaving tomorrow. Where did the goods for the bishop come from? Surely the sheriff wasn't willing to take from his own stock. He has been going around requesting it from the common people, taking it by force, and thanking them for being so generous. They have gone mad. How can they pretend that this is in the good name of the king? Huh. The fastest paths to uh, Hereford passes west through Sherwood, does it not? It does. <laughs> Such is the route the wagon will take. What of it, Robin? Will the wagon be guarded? I am sure, but not by more than a few. What are you thinking, Robin? Ambush them, and take back the goods. You're crazy, you'll enrage them. <laughs> what of it? They already don't like me. <gasps> It'll do them good. How will you do it, Robin? How would you do it alone? Nay, little John, I would not ask for you to help. You are to go home, return to your family. Wind will help me. I would not leave such to be done by yourself and a young woman alone. This is to be done. I will give my aid. I would fight to see this injustice undone. You are a courageous man, little John. <laughs> and a good friend. I will not say no to your aid. Come, our camp is just around the back. Little? He's not little! <laughs> this wood is too quiet. I don't like it. I uh, kind of like it. Little, who are you? Back out of the way. I am Robin of the Wood. What brings you to Sherwood? We're transporting goods. That's all you need to know. Move along. We mustn't be delayed. Ah, yes. You're bringing those goods to the bishop in Hereford. 
I didn't say that. <laughs> I must stop you here. Return at once. Leave the spoils. You have no authority. Back out of the way. Ah! The trap. Back the off. Trap. My stick is pointed. And I a little. <laughs> Leave at once. And we will not harm you. We have no quarrel with you. You're <laughs> reason against the crown. Look like in the past. Well done, but we cannot linger. Little John, the cart, win with me. The soldiers returned to the sheriff, giving the message that they were ambushed in Sherwood by a fleet of woodsmen and his band. And the name they recalled was Robin Hood. Robin of Loxley was once again hindering their mouths. The fame of Robin Hood quickly spread. He began to be known in secret by the common people as a hero. Robin continued doing many good things, helping those beset by ill fortune and protecting those faced by the malice of the sheriff. The heat of summer came and went. Winter passed and another summer dawn. Yea, fourteen months passed. The sheriff becoming more and more aware of Robin's active resistance and making several attempts to capture Robin, though Robin would not be so easily overcome. Although Robin and his companions kept themselves busy doing what they could, life in the woods was often idle with just the three of them. The sport of archery became a favorite among them to pass the time. When and Little John became archers scarcely matchable at this game. But Robin Hood became a man of legend. Robin's target was puffing a twig, finer than your little finger. And at such a distance it could hardly be seen. Even so, he rarely would miss. It was on a cool morn in midsummer when Robin received a plea of a different kind. I've seen your help, good Robin Hood. He is my son, and, and his crime is not true. What am I to do? What am I to do? Am I to rescue him from underneath the nose of the sheriff? Nay, it would be futile and only risk a more grievous end. Well, surely you could do something. I'm sorry for your loss, Gilbert. Truly, I am. I don't know what I am to do. Robin, surely we can do something. Wait till the day of hanging, when he is brought out to the gallows. We interrupt. Little John and I can cause a distraction. Use your war bow and, and rescue the man while he's under guard. It would be an unlikely attempt. What good would it do for us to hang alongside him? Nay, this would only bring more death to ourselves and to the sheriff's soldiers. Those soldiers deserve to die. Nay, though they may follow immoral orders, that is not a deed worthy of death. Those soldiers also have families. We cannot run those clumsy armored soldiers. If need be, your skill at the war bow will render their patchy armor a fall. We play the part of the fox and outsmart the hat. Hmm. The strength of a bow is in range and concealment. I am but one man, and only four of us besides including Gilbert. Even a fox can be overcome by many hounds. Please. Seems a risk not worth taking, but little John would agree. It's not risk of my own life that would hinder me. Little John agreed. On the day of the hanging, Robin Hood, Wind Scarlet, Little John, along with Gilbert, did enter the city to save his brother from hanging. As planned, Little John and Wind created a ruckus. They got the attention of the sheriff and made themselves known. The sheriff, in his shock and outrage at seeing a man of Robin Hood's band within the town, sent most of his bodyguards after them. Robin attempted to hold the remaining guards back at Arrow, while Gilbert released his son. But from the sheriff's egging, one of the soldiers took his chance and charged Gilbert while his back was turned. The timing was poor and Robin's attention lax. Barely in time did Robin's arrow fly, grazing the cheek of Gilbert. In the soldier's neck, the arrow struck between his plates of armor 
making a fatal blow. They were pursued to Sherwood. Several of the soldiers' horses fell from arrow shafts. More than one of the pursuers were injured before they gave up the chase in fear of Robin's bow. I'm surprised you've been able to run on it for so long. It's nothing. I'm fine. We are out of danger. Okay. I'm so very grateful to all of you. I cannot begin to repay me gratitude. Thank you, Robin Hood. You're more even than legend. No need to repay your thanks. Your son here is safe. The five of us made it out alive. It's more than I would have expected. I went in not counting on coming back out myself. Surely, it is a time for rejoicing. Here, here. What will you do? You cannot return home. You're welcome to stay with us. Uh, thank you greatly, but we have family in the north. We'll be making our way there when the season turns. Thank you. Your wound won't be forgotten. It's only a scratch. Come, have dinner with us. Uh, that we will. Uh, we'll be departing sunrise. Let me carry you, Wynn. <clears throat> I can walk. Back in the town, come day, come night, come dark or light. I'll wed her back in the town. <laughs> her hair did shine like glistening gold, her eyes were like blue violets fair. Oh, now. Did I not hear you just the other day singing so blithely about a lassie back in the town? The same in body, good sir. I'm afraid my soul is grievously changed. Mm. Tell me what happened. Perchance I will be able to help. For that, no man on earth, I suppose, but nevertheless, I will tell you the tale. Yesterday I stood pledged to a maid, and thought soon to wake her. But she has been taken from me and is to become an old knight's bride this very day. And as for me, I care not what happens to the end of my days, or how soon without her. Tell me, how did this come to be? The old knight coveted the land whereon my lady dwells. The estate is not large, but all in her own right. Whereon her brother says she shall win a title, he and the old knight have been fixing it up for today. <laughs> Nay, but surely. Hear me out, worship. I am but a commoner. I have no title to my name. They did thrust me out and refuse to let me see my lady. I would fight, but it would prove folly. Does the maiden love you? She loves me right well. I've had this ring by me for seven long years. Ellen is her name. Ellen, my sweetheart. And what be your name? Oh. Forgive me, I am Alan Adair. Hmm. Well, Alan Adair, it may be that I can help you back to your true love. Well, I have no money, <laughs> save only five shillings, but, but are you not Robin Hood? If you can truly aid me, I shall be your true servant forever after. Robin Hood I am, and if be, if it be that I can aid you, I shall do so. But it shall be up to you to win back the love of your lady. Tell me, where is the wedding to take place? At Plimpton Church, scarce five miles from here, and at 3 0 this afternoon. Mm. Ah! We shall do all that we can to bring you to your lady. 
Do you know where she will be? She'll be in the church getting ready. But we have no way to get to her. Mm. Leave that to us. Lean on. Her hair did shine like glistening gold. Her eyes were like blue violets there. A rose itself could but behold the love I have for my lady. Take up our abode alongside you and show. Please, wherever we might stopped at her father's dwelling on an errand past Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> we knew each other when we were children. Growing up, my father often visited hers. That was many years ago. Since my father's death, I had not visited myself. <laughs> on the occasion I had visited, I remember playing with her. She was just a little girl then, and many years younger than myself. She probably barely remembered me. Difference She's, lessons with age, they say. It's true. She did not seem as much younger when I did visit myself. <laughs> However, it was not much long after that I requested her hand of her father, Sir Robert Fitzwalter. He was not able to make it. He sent her along to that archery, archery tournament. The one where they attempted to arrest you. 
Very well. I'm an outlaw now. Now this the dream is gone. The cause of fate is unknown. Times. Holding wealth and power brings about desirous enemies. No matter. I'm happy enough here. Do you know what has become of her? She returned home safely. Well, I know that much. Well, then why don't you go see her? I'm an outlaw, Alma Dale. She is to be a lady. She is a wistful dream. Oh. Uh, perchance! Nay. Life in the wood is no life for her. As you will. Sir Robert Fitzwalter from London to Marion at home. It grieves me, Marion, to be so long away in London. I miss my home, and I do miss my daughter. Give my love to your mother. The words you have sent me regarding the treason of Robin of Loxley is distressing. You have done wisely returning home. I fear there may be more to this treason than you would expect. I am not wholly convinced of the accusations against Robin, but I put great trust in our king's judgment. But I know Robin's father well, and have known Robin himself to be of similar character. It shocks me that Robin would involve himself in any disloyalty. Even so, some good men have proven immoral and true. My business, regard, my business in London was in regards to our Lord of Lincoln. But I regret that if Robin is connected to this, as it does seem, my errand will be extended. Health, wellness, and safety, by God's grace, be with you. Until I return, farewell. Your loving father, Robert Fitzwalter. Marion, what are you doing? This chore is not for the likes of you. Sir Guy, forgive me. Our sable hand is out just now. What brings you here? From your looks, you've been doing far more than watering the horses. This work is being recused. I expected to find you in more suiting finery. What possessed you to dismiss your groom while there was still work to be done? You have more servants besides. There's no harm in getting work done which needs done. Your father has been gone far too long. Come, stay with me. I will take care of you. Nay, this is my home. It's your father's home, and a good one. But marriage will give you a new home. When I am wed, I will take my new home. We should be wed. Wait for my father's will, Guy. Until then, I wish to stay here. Is it Robin? Does that outlaw still hold your affections? Sir Guy, I care not for Robin. His past betrothal is a blemish on me. I wish him forgotten. Is it then that stands in your way? Why is your father's response delayed? Have patience. It would become you. Go. Get yourself dressed. I shall be staying briefly. I am delighted. Stay until your business pulls you elsewhere. And only till tomorrow. Then I must leave. Leave the buckets. I'll see you inside. Treated well by the sky. Peace! I only wish to speak with you. Robert Foxley! What business do you have with me? Maid Marion, daughter of Fitzwalter. Even in your coarse attire, your hair strewn, you do reflect the sun's brilliant rays of beauty. What is it you want? Who is this guy you're speaking with? Sir Guy Gisborne from Lancashire. He is a well respected knight. Lancashire? What brings him so far? He came to assist the Sheriff of Nottingham. He has made his abode in Locksley Hall. I'm glad someone should be making use of my home. He wishes to wed him. Do you wish him? I don't know. He seems a decent man. He's also a powerful man. I'm surprised you don't know him. He's come around more recently. I've been out of touch. Is your father around? He's still in London. 
For shame. I would have liked to have spoken with him. He's been gone for over a year now. Almost 18 months. Have you heard from him at all? Robin, what do you want? Nothing. Why are you here? I came to see you. You are Terry. You are not the man you were. Nay, no, I am the same man. Just in a different home. I must go quickly or, or Guy will return. Go. Guy, <laughs> how's the day's work? Fair enough. Save a little protest. Nothing serious. Just a few serfs gathered to resist our collection. They jumped us. Feisty bastards killed one of my men. Well, he died doing his service. Uh, it was an honorable death. What did you do with the peasants? We bound them. They were easily dominated once the little trick was done. <laughs> to hang them. Of course. And so then immediately, their bodies are still hanging from the trees. <laughs> Leave them there. Let Robin Hood come and rescue their dead bodies. That cursed outlaw. I should have killed him before he got in that deep wood. <sighs> yes, indeed. But traitor though he was, he deserved to have a proper hanging. He no longer deserves a noble's honor. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> but he is unapproachable in that wood. He has become far too familiar with it. It's become to him as a, a vast fortress. Yet it must be done. It cannot be done with force. It's like a fairy fortress that vanishes and moves at his will. He would dart any army we sent in there and probably dispatch a few with that cursed bow. No, 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 no. We must play this one more stealthily. Stealthier than the fox himself? Yes, yes. Take a couple choice soldiers, stay hidden, and then be the first to strike. It would be of no use. It would take over a year to find anything useful. It must be done! You are not my lord, Sheriff. Do it yourself. While he remains, our, our work here will constantly be controverted. Oh. Lord Simon has, has made a decree. He has declared all of Sherwood to be restricted hunting grounds. They are now the private hunting grounds of the king. That's a her. Seems excessive. Those would provide a source of good food for many common people. Yes, yes, but this is for the king's good and his favor. And as Robin Hood is in Sherwood, he hunts in those woods. Now that they are exclusively for King Henry, Robin Hood will be committing a crime against the king himself. I see. A crime truly worthy of hanging. <laughs> yes, I thought so. That still doesn't help us catch him. But it lessens his uh, ability to be redeemed by the king. And it's possible, if we are lucky, that Robin Hood may leave Sherwood in, in an attempt to avoid trouble. That's unlikely. Perhaps. Lord Simon is uh, planning a trip to London, and he's going to be stopping at Nottingham on the way, going through the road through Sherwood. He would like the woods to be and the edict enforced. Sure. I'll see it done. Ah. Keep an eye out for Robin and watch for his movements. If you wish. I'll head to show in a few days. First I'd like to go to Lincolnshire and pay Mary in a visit. Have two able soldiers be at the ready. Yes, yes. Well, go, go and visit your fine young maiden. <laughs> Your real father, Marion? He sends letters regularly. It's not like seeing him, though. Two years? Two years in a day. Do not despair. You will return in due time, though it has been long. Tell me, what 
What's his purpose in London? To wind down the interest. My thoughts reflect your thoughts. Your father is often on my mind. I do not really know. Really? Do not speak of it, you do not wish. <coughs> the sun will be setting soon. It'll be getting dark. And the sky is clear, the moon is bright. It will be a beautiful twilight. Would you like to linger and see it? I'm sorry. I must leave. I have to get halfway to Nottingham before my day is done. Leave this late? You're welcome to stay another night with us. I've stayed longer than is wise already. Surely you would not travel into the night. The moon is bright. Farewell, Marianne. Stay, watch the sunset, <laughs> as I also will be watching while I ride. Goodbye. sets in the dim light of twilight sets the moon. What do you think, Ida? Would you like to hear a minstrel story? No. Yes, ma'am. Ida, is it? <laughs> well, anyways, I am Alanadale, minstrel and bard. I come from afar to the light and beguile, and where I hail is always part of the tale. Life and listen a tale I tell, a legend of Robin Hood. Aye, that he is, but come along. 
In Count Love is he yet so much more, Robin, hero of the free, a protector of all who might be in need. Robin Hood under Sherwood Tree, Robin Hood under Sherwood Tree. Fine. I found Lord Simon. He'll be in this part of the wood this evening. Fantastic. Where is Sir Guy? He went off to do something. He'll be back soon. Oh, great. More waiting. Fifteen days of wandering around aimlessly. Who knows how many more? This is day sixteen. Do you think we'll catch Robin Hood tomorrow? No. I feel like we almost have him. I'm sure he's near. We almost got him today. Oh, did you find another rabbit hiding in the bush? The bush? No. I'm sure it was in my good Smell it. You can't smell it. The least you could do is catch a rabbit. I could do is some rabbit stew. Because of thinking about rabbit stew, just focused on the objective. The objective is to catch poachers. Sure, but it's boring. Oh, I never denied that. This one is too quiet. I'd rather a fierce battle. That's just mind over terror. Catching Robin Hood will make us famous. Quiet fools. How are we supposed to catch anything if we're not heard? By who? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is around here. We haven't seen anybody in three days. I just saw someone up near the road with a bow. You'll come with me. Revolt. I met Lord Simon, and uh, he'll be here in three or four hours, I expect. Good. Return to him and show him that he finds us. Aye. You follow me. Aye, aye. Be quiet. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, Dale. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Robin. Where did you go with your wandering tale this time? Believe it or not, as I was traveling around Derbyshire, I was invited to entertain hmm. at a dinner. <laughs> I believe it. Yes, well, Marion was there. For what? At Derbyshire? Well, I heard the name Marion. It was used to refer to a young lady at the table. She seemed to be a guest. She had quite a smile. She was enjoying herself. But Yes, well, she was sitting over with her servant girl. Oh? Ida was her name. Charming little girl. Well, I wasn't confident whether it was the same Mary, so I hazarded the guess and I used the full name. I figured if I was wrong, I could play it off as an introduction to a ballad of someone or improv something. Indeed. <laughs> but yay, Marion Fitzwalter it was. Oh, for shame. I would have liked to have heard your ballad. <laughs> Well, I did her one better. I sang her one of mine, of Robin Hood. You and your foolish ballads. You'll make me famous throughout all England. They've already begun to believe them. Perhaps I embellish them some, but they're true with the court. Marion Fitzwalter will be traveling through Sherwood this evening. You should invite her to dinner. Sir Guy has been seen wandering the woods. I believe he's out looking for us. That's no good. Mm. Oh, I heard Lord Simon is making his way through Sherman. Do you think he may be planning to meet up with Guy? Perhaps. Hmm. I saw Lord Simon's convoy boy on my way back from Sherwood. I reckon he'll be here this evening. Look there. A knight astride his horse. See? Who is he? Is his purse overburdened? Mm, he seems overworn. All dreary in his semblance, and little in his pride, he's one foot in the stir of stamps, his other waves beside, his visor hung down o'er his eyes, he rode in single array, a sorrier man than he was one. <laughs> <laughs> 
never in summer's day. Ha ha ha! Now it's good to have you back. Have him dine with us this evening. It may be that we can learn at this tale. And, though we may lighten his purse, we may give not only ill treatment. Oh, hi, Alan. Uh, Robin, quickly, there is trouble. Little John, we can handle this. He's dismounted and comes this way. My master would, uh, ha <laughs> ha, fair greetings, uh, fair night. My master would have you dine with us this evening. Who is your master? None other than Robin Hood. Robin? Oh, well, tis clear that your invitation is too urgent to admit refusal. And I go with you right willingly, my friends. I was just purposing to dine myself, but... Uh, Nothing matters greatly. What then be the name of our most honored guest? Sir Richard of the Lee. Whoa. Might I hold your sword? <laughs> if you wish. <laughs> El, you take the roundabout way. I'll take care of the horse and aid Robin. <laughs> In the name of the king, noble Simon, the Earl of Yorkshire, it is a crime to hunt in these lands. Let me go! Quiet, sir. You are breaking the law. I don't care what Lord Simon says. One must eat. Oh. It's not just. Silence. Now I will administer justice. For your crimes, Hanging would not be an unjust no, desert. No, no, Enough, for I will choose not to show mercy. I understand life has difficulties, but that is no excuse to dishonor the law. The law is there for the good of all. I do not wish to hang you, but I must give you a reminder that you will not forget. Hold out your bowstring hand, and I will remove your forefinger. Sir Guy, what is happening? Marion. What are you doing here? What are you doing? Sorry, Mary, you should not see this. This is not appropriate business for a maiden. Take this surf up the road. Lord Simon will be coming this way. You'll have to deal with her. Go and meet him. My dear Mary, it is an unexpected delight to see you, but what are you doing in Sherwood? It isn't safe. Are the King's Highways no longer safe? Oh, go quickly! Come with me, I'll get you out of here. for Guy. It's more than he deserves. Thank you, little John. My apologies, fair maidens. I did not wish to have such violence in front of you. Robin Hood? Yes, Maid Marian. This must be Eda. Are you all right? What do you want? I want nothing. Why are you here? Do not harm us and... I will give you whatever you ask. Do not mistake me for a common thief. If we had not arrived in time and Lord Simon had gotten a hold of that poor girl, she would have been hung. That must be Lord Simon. Little John, leave them. Lord Simon will have to care for Sir Guy. 
Marion, I do not believe it would be wise for you to remain. You should come with us. There's no telling what Lord Simon will do if he saw you here with this. Go with you? Lord Simon is not a gentleman, even to a maiden. We'll be fine, I'm sure of it. Marion, I cannot allow this. Come. I told him to go the roundabout way. He's bringing a guest. Good. We'll make a party with that. I'm sorry, Mary. Sorry for what? Taking me prisoner? You're not a prisoner. Oh, is that why you dragged me out here then? I didn't drag you. You followed. Sir Guy will not awaken until the morning. There's no telling what Simon would have done with you over the night. What are you suggesting? Simon is a wicked man. Do not think it being an honor knight's nice daughter will protect you. Why do you care? Kiana is safely on her way home. That's her name, Kiana. Lady Marion? Lady Wynne? Yes, that's me! What are you doing here? Robin Hood has taken me captive. <laughs> oh? I'm surprised you recognized me with my skin being tan and my gloves less delicate. What are you doing here? What do you expect me to do? With my cousin made an outlaw? It's comfortable enough. And you wouldn't believe if I've learned to shoot the bow. Really? <laughs> How long are you staying? Um. You're not a prisoner. You're free to leave as you will. But it's late. Food has been prepared, and Ellen will prepare a bed for you, the finest the wood can offer. Thank you. We will leave in the morning. Goody! Why were you in Sherwood in the first place, Marion? I was returning from a visit to a family friend in Derbyshire. Oh? Did you enjoy it? Just visit. We had a lovely dinner party before I left. Oh, I didn't go to many sophisticated parties. I always preferred more rough games. <laughs> I'm sure you would enjoy sophistication as you get older, Lady Wynne. I don't suppose I'm a lady anymore. Guess for good or ill, I'm an outlaw now. <laughs> ah, welcome, Sir Knight. You are coming good time. We were just getting ready to set down to meet. A welcome word for my worn body, good master. I could not agree more. <laughs> good food is always a delight. Has my horse been cared for? I will not take meat before my horse. Certainly, as you are a knight. Come, see to your horse. Sir Richard Lee, why is he here? You know him. My father's known him well. He's a good noble knight. I do not know his tale. Perhaps he'd be willing to tell us. So after his horse was cared for, the knight laid aside his own heavy gear and laughed his face and hands and sat down with Robin and all his men to a most plentiful repast. After eating right heartily of the good cheer, the knight brightened up greatly and vowed that he had not enjoyed so good a dinner for nine three weeks. He also said that if ever Robin and his fellows should come to his domains, he would strive to set them down to as good a dinner on his own behalf. Your words are kind, and I thank you in return. But I am a mere yeoman. In truth, I'm known as an outlaw. I could hardly provide such a meal as a gift of charity. I have no money. I have so little of the world's goods in truth that I should be ashamed to offer you the whole of it. Money, however little you may deem it, may be worth more to some. Pray you tell me what you deem a little sum. I have of my own only ten shillings. Here they are. I wish they were ten times as many. Oh, he speaks the truth. There is but ten shillings here. Tell me, Sir Knight, for these are sorry times if this be all your wealth there. I saw that your armor was battered and your clothes were torn. Tell me. 
Were you a yeoman who has made a knight by force, or have you been a bad steward and squandered your riches? I am a good Saxon knight in my own right, and I have always lived a sober and quiet life. My name is Sir Richard of the Lee, and I dwell in a castle not a league from Nottingham, which has belonged to my father, and my father's father, and my father's father before him. Within two or three years ago, my neighbors might have told you that a matter of 400 pounds, one way or the other, was as naught to me. But now, I have only these 10 shillings, and my wife, and my son. Tell me, how did you lose your wealth? Through folly and kindness. I went upon a crusade, from which I am but lately returned, to find my son, a goodly youth, grown up. He was but twenty, yet he had achieved a squire's training, and could play prettily in the jousts and tournaments and other knightly games. About this time, he did have the ill luck to accidentally kill a knight in the open list. To save the boy, I have sold most of my lands. And that not being enough in the end, I have had to borrow money at a ruinous interest from my lord, the Bishop of Earth. The most worthy bishop. Tell me, Sir Knight, how much is it that you owe? Four hundred pounds. The bishop swears he will claim my castle, my home, if they are not paid promptly. But surely you have some friends who would be surety for you. Not one, or else the tale might be otherwise. Come, Sir Richard of the Lee, refill your goblet. health and prosperity to you, gallant Robin. And I hope the next time I ride by, I may pay your cheer more worthily. Take this 400 pounds from us and pay back your debt to the bishop. Nay, no thanks. You are but exchanging one creditor for another. It may be that we will not be so hard upon you as the most unworthy bishop. And again, we may be harder. God save you, comrade, and keep you all in. Give me a grateful heart. I shall return it to you within the year upon my honor as Sir Richard of the Lee. And for all time, pray count on me as a steadfast friend. She is a lady of noble birth. She is a knight's daughter. 
not a lady. If you wish for royal blood, you should strive higher. She has fairer manners than many of higher birth. Is that so? Did you not see her carrying a, a, a servant's load uh, upon a previous visit? Do not try me. She has a stray mind. She needs a man to keep her from wandering. Indeed. Uh, but what about Lord Simon? Is he going to help us with Robin? Lord Simon is heading straight for London. Why? Lord Simon's more concerned about Marion's father, Sir Robert Fitzwater. What does Sir Robert have to do with this? Sir Robert's been in London for over a year, as I told Lord Simon. I don't know why, but Lord Simon believes that Sir Robert is trying to redeem Robin of Luxley. Sir Robert never liked Lord Simon, and if he gains the King's favor, it does not bode well for us. Well, why can't that wait? If he's been in London all this time, then we should get Robin Hood first. Lord Simon's no fool. One can't simply catch Robin Hood while he resides in Sherwood, sort of burning the whole wood down. We can get him if we are patient enough. Even if we could, we don't have time. Lord Simon thinks that Sir Robert is communicating with Robin. He thinks that is why Marion was in Sherwood. He thinks Marion is meeting with Robin. Oh, now that, that is funny. <laughs> I don't believe it. Marion would have nothing to do with any outlaw. Well, from the sound of it, she's going to have to learn to deal with that outlaw for a while. What if they harm her? Perhaps she will learn not to wander off. She's not a toy. Uh, do they want a ransom? What? I don't know. Well, offer one if you must. You might as well get used to that outlaw taking your money. <laughs> six days seeking to determine your fate. I am sorry. I did not think to seek you out. Oh, it matters little now. Stay as long as you'd like. Thank you, Lady Fitzwalter. Marion, why did Robin Hood capture you? I don't know. Is that true? Lord Simon suspects otherwise. I was left alone on a ro road with a dead soldier and an unconscious knight who was bested by a bandit with a staff. What did you think I was going to do? I'm sorry. I am put to shame. I should have protected you. It is okay. By God's grace, I am all right. Lord Simon thinks that you are communicating with Robin for your father. I was captured by an outlaw. Not that the alternative is much better with Lord Simon so wicked man. And if he found me out there as it was, I might not have been so well off. Then why is your father in London? Why do you cry? Father has told me little, but Sir Guy, Robin Hood is an outlaw. Father knows that. He would not easily distrust the king's judgment. Come along inside. Come share our side. Sir Guy, what took you so long? I was with Mary. Oh, you found her. Good. Safe and well at home? Stop it. Yes. Marion had nothing that Robin Hood wanted. Stop being a fool. Did you learn anything from Marion? 
This is for Marion. How did you get it? Read it. I cannot. <sighs> Lord Simon would like to see you in London. Uh, he, the king has granted him his favor, and there may be, there may be some land available. Oh, just read that. Sir Robert Fitzwalter, to my daughter Marian. I am going to die. I have been contrived against. I write this letter with but little hope of it reaching you. If by providence you find this letter when I am long gone, be reminded again of my fatherly love and be comforted that I knew of your love. There is a growing power, once dealing in shadow, now freely. I travel to London to speak with the king of the injustices of our Earl of Lincolnshire, of brewing treason. The king's ear has been strangely closed, cursing Robin Hood and not discerning more than the outlaw in the woods. If not our own Earl alone, able to deal more plainly, Lord Simon of Yorkshire learned of my effort and contrived my death. I do not watch my back. Lord Simon convinced King Henry that I was working with Robin. It was also he, Lord Simon, who contrived fault against Robin of Loxley in the king's ear, turning the king against a true servant who once he would have trusted, and by his accusations has focused the king's mind on Robin Hood, blinding him. What was once injustices has become both oppression and treason, making things past seem small. My daughter Marion, do not believe the accusations against the good Lord Robin of Loxley, Robin Hood of Sherwood. If time should darken, and I am not, and my home is not safe, seek him out. He will grant you safety and give you love. Do not be lost in grief at my passing. Let sorrow not linger. Forget not the joy in your memory. Know that I love you greatly, and I mourn that I shall pass away from home. Even without receiving this letter, I trust that you will find a good path. Use wisdom, and do not let fear hide reason and lead you astray. Your loving father, Sir Robert Fitzwalter. Sir Guy followed Lord Simon to London and several weeks passed. The leaves full of this summer drew nigh. It was calm while Lord Simon was in London, like a deep breath was drawn in. The Sheriff of Nottingham was quiet, having given up on Robin Hood for the time, satisfied in the part he played, turning the king again prone to anger against Sir Robert Fitzwalter. It was the spring two summers after that archery tournament where Robin, accused of imagined treason, was out. Sure. Sir Guy, it is good to see you. Forgive me for giving you such little notice of my coming. This is not a burden. I'm afraid that I have very ill news that I bear. I regret that I didn't want to bring it. Do not spare me, tell. Your father is dead, Marion. He got caught up in some misfortunes in London. In his last words, he expressed his love for you. Father? He... He's been gone for two years. Fate can be cruel, such as life. Misfortune does compound. Your father gone. His lands will be repossessed. Not without hope, Mary. These lands have been granted to me. I do not wish to separate you from them. Mary, be my bride <clears throat> and subside misery. I will watch over you and protect you. I will keep you comfortable. You will remain here in the land of your childhood, in the, the home you knew your father. Your father's memories will be close 
and dear. Marian, I want you not for any wealth. Interpret the wisdom of your father. Be my bride. You are a fine man, Dad. Please, put me for mother. Please, leave us in peace for a time. That is your will. Lord well, Simon, I said meet you, the Earl, here in Lincoln. I'll return in a few days. Have comfort, and do not grieve more than is due. Farewell, fair Marian. sophisticated parties and told me to be on my very best behavior. I was on edge all night. I didn't think I was enjoying myself. You raved about it as soon as you got back home. I wanted to go back. He was very proud of you. Was he? Of course. He said you'd grown into a very charming young lady. I remember what he said before he left. He called me a beautiful young lady. But you are. I can remember his smile as he said it. What are we to do, Mother? Our home and land is forfeit. Shall I marry God at his bequest? Why are we get the land and this home would remain ours? He's no longer the man. Why would God get the land? But I said the land was granted to him. No. By all the rights, this land would go to your father's brother. Guys have it, he's done so by contrivance. Your marriage would certainly make it easier. Guy wants me for more than wealth. Yes, Marion, my daughter, you are a fair maiden. You've attracted Guy's affections. He is a noble man. He would take care of you until death. He would be kind to you if you gave him no cause to rebuke. Yes, would it not then be wise? I is a simple man. He is motivated by little more than power and wealth. He is chivalrous, but immoral. Would you stay with him while he, pill or while he pillages and burns those who unable to pay his contrived taxes? 
Or would you stand by and watch while he hangs peasants for petty crimes against unjust laws? I figured your father was more right than he knew. It is more than our own lords in Lincoln that now run rampant. What would you have us do? Run and hide until starvation takes us? Where would I go? Where would you go? I cannot lose you. I would go to your father's brother. He would take care of me. What about you? What a problem, Bosley. He's an outlaw, is he not, mother? Do you believe his accusers? Those guilty of treason themselves? Even as an unprivileged outlaw, what wrong have you seen Robin do? Oh, mother, I'm scared. I wish things would go back to the way they were. Back to before father left. Back to that summer two years past at the archery tournament when, when I went to join Lord Robin of Loxley. He was kind and noble and comforting. Life seems to have fallen down around us. And then the fear stand in your way. Please assure Lord, as he did, find your love and, and happiness, even in the depths of the wood. Oh, Mother, I will. Mary, it is when spring springs, when flowers bloom and birds sing. Mary, it is when spring springs, when winter sighs and snow dies. Mary, it is when spring springs, when she flowers bloom and birds sing. What for? She speaks of when winter sighs and snow dies. Mary, it is when spring springs, when flowers bloom and... Mary! What brings you to show up? What's wrong? How may I help you? Harry, what is the fall of mine that's here in your eyes? It's my father. So if it's Walter. Pray, tell. He's dead. Oh, Mary. He was a good man. Yes, Robin. I will always remember him with strong affections. Our land is given to Sir God, his born. So he wishes my marriage. What brings you to Sherwood then? If it be that I can help, speak. And I will do every thing I can. You do not wish to marry him. Would you come and live the life of the green wood? Would you take me? Lady Mary. Fair maiden. I cannot cease thinking of you. I cannot help but remember your eyes in my dreams. I hear your voice among the leaves and see your hair trailing from the sun. I do not mind my life in the wood but for its severing of our union. And Marion, would you be my love even in the wood? Lord Robin, Robin Hood, how can you be so true? With such malice set against you and such wrongs, put your name. Even in the wood, you're kind and true, so I've seen. Even in the wood, I would be with you, to the end. Even until death. his good deeds and frustrating the forces against him, untouchable in his stronghold of trees. He ever sought to bring a true peace. When King Henry died, his son Richard the Lionheart was made king. Richard would have made a good king, but immediately away on a crusade, his brother Prince John ruled in his absence. Prince John was a cruel king. Oppression went rampant and his own hunger for wealth unquenchable. All of England entered a dark period. It was Robin who made safe King Richard's return, and happy days finally returned. But that tale is for another day.
great night.